What's up everyone, Rob from Ishimoto. Today we're going to install our all aluminum performance radiator in your 89 to 2001 four liter Jeep Cherokee. Let's get started. Tools needed for installation are T30 torque socket, 8 mm socket, 10 mm socket, 11 mm socket, quarter inch drive ratchet, quarter inch driver, 19 mm socket, 3 8 drive ratchet, 3 8 drive extensions, 30 mm socket, half inch drive ratchet, 10 mm wrench, 16 mm wrench, 19 mm wrench, 22 mm wrench, channel lock pliers, panel tool, and a flathead screwdriver. Install time is two and a half hours. Install difficulty is a four out of five. Caution, never work on the cooling system when it's hot. The coolant temperature in the radiator can be considerably higher than boiling and the system may be under pressure. Opening a cooling system that's hot or under pressure can result in serious injury. Always wait until the system has cooled completely before servicing it in any way. This procedure covers the installation of our radiator on a newer, open style Jeep XJ cooling system. The installation will be very similar on older Jeeps, but some steps may differ. Set the vehicle on an automotive lift or raise it with a jack and place it securely on jack stands. Refer to your owner's manual for safe lifting points if you're unsure. Remove the tree clip that secures the passenger side fender liner to the front bumper. Pull the liner down to gain access to the wheel well. Loosen the petcock on the radiator to drain the coolant. Remove the pressure cap on the radiator or expansion tank on older Jeeps to expedite the draining process. Remove the overflow hose from the radiator filler neck. Disconnect the wiring harness from the auxiliary fan. To release this connector, slide the red lock tab out and squeeze the black tab. Our donor vehicle had a broken connector, which allowed the locking tab to come out, but this is not normal. Remove the two bolts that secure the top of the auxiliary fan to the radiator support. Then lift the fan up and remove it from the vehicle. There are two clips on the bottom of the auxiliary fan that fit into a bracket at the bottom of the radiator support. Remove the two bolts that secure the top of the cooling fan shroud to the radiator support. Then lift the shroud up slightly and lean it towards the engine to get it out of the way. Remove the two nuts that secure the radiator to the radiator support. Remove the four nuts and four Torx bolts that secure the trim panel to the vehicle. Then remove the trim panel. The trim panel and radiator support can be removed together, but they need to be installed separately due to the increased size of the Mishimoto radiator. Remove the six bolts that secure the radiator support to the vehicle. Then remove the radiator support and trim panel from the vehicle. Remove the thread cutting nut, nut, and washers that secure the AC condenser bracket. Then remove the bracket. Repeat this process on the driver's side. Place a drain bucket under the driver's side of the radiator and loosen the clamp that secures the lower transmission cooler to the fitting. Then remove the line from the fitting. Loosen the flare nut that secures the upper transmission cooler line to the radiator and separate the line from the radiator. If possible, use a flare wrench when working on this fitting to reduce the chance of rounding over the fitting. Compress the clamp that secures the lower radiator hose and separate the hose from the radiator. Compress the clamp that secures the upper radiator hose and separate the hose from the radiator. Remove the radiator from the vehicle.
Remove the upper isolators from the factory radiator. Locate the filler neck hardware included with your kit. If you have a newer style Jeep or you are converting to an open cooling system, you will install the fitting with the overflow tube. If you have an older style Jeep, you will install the plug. Select the appropriate fitting for your installation and wrap the threads with Teflon tape. Wrap in the direction shown here so the tape will tighten itself around the fitting when you install it. Make sure to clear the tip of the fitting to prevent Teflon tape from getting into the cooling system. Then install the fitting to the threaded overflow port on the radiator filler neck. Snug the drain bolt on the Mishimoto radiator. Locate the temperature sensor plug on the back of the Mishimoto radiator. If you have a newer style Jeep, simply tighten this plug until it's snug. If you have an older style Jeep, remove the plug and transfer the coolant temperature sensor from your old radiator. Install the provided transmission line adapter fitting to the lower port on the transmission cooler. Leave this fitting loose for now. You will tighten it once the radiator is installed in the vehicle. Reposition the AC condenser in the vehicle. The lower bracket on the AC condenser must sit over the isolator grommets for the radiator. When the radiator is installed, the pins on the bottom of the radiator must pass through the bracket on the AC condenser. Lower the radiator into place so the pins on the bottom of the radiator engage the isolator grommets and brackets on the AC condenser. Lift the cooling fan shroud up slightly and engage the tabs on the bottom of the shroud with the slots on the Mishimoto radiator. Position the lower transmission line adapter fitting so that the tube on the fitting is clear of the body, and then tighten the fitting to lock the tube in place. Install the lower transmission cooler line to the fitting on the radiator and secure the hose with the clamp. Install the upper transmission cooler line to the fitting at the top of the radiator. Align the flared end of the cooler line with the end of the fitting and then slip the flare nut over the fitting and tighten it completely. Reconnect the lower radiator hose and secure it with the clamp. Reconnect the upper radiator hose and secure it with the clamp. Lower the auxiliary fan into place so the tabs on the bottom of the shroud engage the slots on the radiator. Reconnect the fan to the electrical harness and lock the connector. Secure the adapter plate to the AC condenser. This design has changed over the years so you may have to do some test fitting to find out what works best for your vehicle. The adapter plate can be loosened to provide some adjustability and new brackets are included for older Jeeps. On this Jeep, I removed the upper isolator bushings from the AC condenser and used the original brackets to get a flush installation. Secure the brackets with the original hardware. Install the upper isolators to the adapter plate and secure them with the provided hardware. Install the radiator support over the Mishimoto radiator and thread in the original hardware. Install the trim plate over the radiator support and secure it with the four nuts and four Torx bolts. Now go back and tighten all the fasteners on the radiator support and the trim piece. Lead the overflow hose across the top of the cooling fan shroud. Secure the shroud and the overflow hose with the two original bolts. 
secure the top of the auxiliary fan with the two original bolts. Reattach the overflow hose to the radiator. Tuck the fender liner back into place and secure it with the tree clip. Fill the cooling system with pre-mixed, Jeep-approved coolant. Start the engine and allow it to idle with the cap off. Turn the heater control valve on the vehicle's HVAC unit to full hot and put the fan on low. Monitor the engine temperature and coolant level in the reservoir. Add coolant as needed to maintain a proper level in the reservoir and check your connections for leaks. If the vehicle begins to overheat or coolant starts to overflow from the reservoir, shut off the engine and allow it to cool before continuing. Once the vehicle is fully warmed up and the coolant level has stabilized, allow the vehicle to cool off completely and then top off the coolant. The coolant level should be checked once more after putting in some miles. Now that you have the radiator installed, take a moment to check your work. Make sure none of the connections are leaking and that the coolant is fully topped off. Then it's time to fire up your Jeep for a test drive. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out.